Hello, and welcome to Focus on Revere. I'm Debbie Pesca, and I'm here with Doreen DiRienzo. Hi, Doreen. Hello. Doreen's here from Revere, the Revere Karate Academy. And Doreen, I can't remember ever not seeing Revere Karate Academy on Broadway, Revere. Tell us how long has, how long has it been there the, in existence? We're in our 34th year. Um, February will be 34 years. Um, wow. During the time, we've probably taught nearly 30,000 students. Wow. You know, um, it's amazing. You know, I see people, they'll come up to me and they'll say, hello, Mrs. C, and I'll look up and it'll be some kid that I taught in the 80s or the 90s, and it's just amazing. It's, yeah, it's really been there amazing. it's a real thing. long time. And for me, it just has gone by in the blink of an eye. It I know. It doesn't feel like that. It has not ever felt old to me. I still love it. I still love teaching yeah. martial arts. I still love teaching. Well, tell me a little karate. bit about yourself. How did you start out at uh, Revere Karate? Well, a little bit about yourself. Let's well, start there. I, I took my first karate lesson for not the typical things. You know, most people do for self-defense or to get in shape or build confidence. Mine was because of shin splints. <laughs> I played basketball actually on the very first team Revere High School ever had, and um, my legs were aching, aching, and I was told it was shin splints. So I thought the next season, hmm, if I do something over the summer and stay in good shape, that would help me. But when I took my first lesson, it's a very difficult thing to explain, but something awakened inside my heart and my soul. I couldn't get there enough. I couldn't practice enough. I just loved, loved doing it. And it was a... a around the corner from my house um, it, there was a, a man named John D he taught Kempo karate in, a, in the Whalen school gym and, really? and it was that's really where I, I started off and like I said it's um, I once did an interview when somebody said well I guess it's like I I signed up for the summer but it turned out to be an endless summer and oh, really because really? now for me it's 40 years you know I'm in my for I'm in my 41st year of martial arts wow. and I've never stopped I mean I mean I've taken a little break you know a couple times when I was pregnant you know but other than <laughs> that um, I've never stopped training and learning and progressing and um, trying to better myself even as a martial artist so then you started Revere Karate Academy yep I started it in 1980 um, I was married at the time uh, my ex-husband and I started it together mm -hmm. um, he went off and had a school in Saugus for a bit and and I stayed here in Revere and I've, you know, like I said, I never left. I've, I've always, always um, there, and it never, it never gets old. Like I said, you know, I really enjoy it. It's like, it's a, it's a thing where you know people think it's like about you know, everyone was kung fu fighting, and you know, it really, you know, I get to participate on a daily basis in watching people get better, you know, really get better, whether it's a little kid who had no confidence to let go of their mom's hand, or watching someone like you know, my adult students become more confident, more competent, more, more just better at what they want to be better at. And they use martial arts as that vehicle to do that. And it's just sure. a really amazing feeling for me to, to be given the privilege and the honor to be their guide through that process. It's just an incredible thing. And I'm going off course a little bit from Revere Karate, but I know that you're teaching at the high school as well. I do. I teach health at Revere High School. and. Besides martial arts, my other passion in life is about health. And again, I absolutely love it. I love the kids. I love working, you know, and seeing their faces, you know, when they learn about how to stay healthy and how to be better. And it's just a great, great feeling, you know. Like, I, so I'm so blessed that I get to do not just one job, but two jobs every day that I absolutely love. Working with people, teaching, and, and helping them to grow and learn. And it's just it's for me it lights up my soul that's great yeah. that's great no you look great you you seem happy yeah, and I, I said that to you when you walked in you look great you Thank know you. I've known you a long time and yeah. you look great and, Thank you. and you're in your karate and your black belt so tell me I know you're very humble about this but tell me wh how far you've come in your karate well currently I'm I'm at what's called ninth degree black belt in Ed Parker's Kempo Karate and Right now, I am the highest ranked Kempo female worldwide. Mm -hmm. I, wow. I've, um, you know, I just said I won that honor just because I stuck around. But um, <laughs> it, is, uh, it is quite a thing, you know, when I look sometimes at, like, um, I was recently profiled in this book called The International Journey. 
and it was all men and me. And I looked at the picture of all of us together, and I said, wow, I said, I think I know who the toughest person in that room is. I think it's me, because I had to, you know, kind of fend myself with all the men, a male-dominated, you know, uh, sport, and, and it just, you know, pretty incredible. And for the life of me, you know, I don't know why I didn't become a hairdresser or, you know, <laughs> something like that. And, and believe me, I love my hairdresser. So it's like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying that in a bad way. I mean, just I don't know what compelled me except, like I said, that very first lesson, something awakened inside my soul. And I knew that I was doing something that was real and right for me. No, it sounds like a love and a passion. Yeah, it it has to be it to go to be. that far yeah. in, in, like you yeah. said, a male dominant. I just never, you just uh, amazed me in all men, the only one. And, 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 you know, honestly, I never set out to amaze anybody. I never set out to you know, say, oh, impress anybody. I just kept doing what I loved every day. And if that's amazing, that's, that's, that's great. But it's really not my reason for doing it. You know, it's like I feel that everybody's amazing in their own way. I mean, you know, if you're a mom, you know, and you have to get up every day and take care of your child and you do that with love and passion, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. It's no easy thing. Of all the things I've ever done in my life, being a parent is the single hardest thing I've ever done. You never finish. And my kids are older now and I still think about them, worry about them, try to be there for them still every day. Same way my mom and dad are with me. I told my mother I was going to go sit by the pool. She says, don't sit out too long. You know, like, we, you never, you, you never That job it. never ends. It never ends. That so job never that ends. So that, to me, is amazing, you know, um, being able to do that. And it's like, okay, so someone will look at me, and, well, I'm a ninth-degree master instructor. You know, that was never my goal. I just kept doing what I love, and I kept earning these accolades all along the way. And, you know, here I am, 40-plus years later. And, th and that is, um, you know, that... That's a, a lesson for our children, to do what you love and you will be successful. Yeah. I mean, I don't have the biggest bank account in the world, but boy, my heart is filled every single day. You know, that, that is worth volumes more than any dollar amount you could ever give to that. Um, sure, I mean, yeah, I'd like to have, you know, a level of comfort that I don't have right now, but you know what? It's okay because I, I get to wake up every day happy about the choices I've made. And it's not, um, you know, like we want to pick careers. And, and I say, if you pick something you love and want to do that, see yourself doing it, find a way to do that every day. And for me, it was always about teaching. And I was able to teach, you know, martial arts. And then I went back to teaching school. And, and that's really what I, I love doing more than anything. Now, your, your son's teaching with you? My son, Anthony Cogliandro, is now the head instructor of the Revere Karate Academy. Um, he does an absolutely outstanding, amazing job. He, he manages the classes. I mean, I still go in and teach, but he pretty much runs, runs the, the program, and he does a phenomenal job. Um, he himself is um, I st interesting, you know, how he started. He came to karate with me because his little brother, Joe, who's not so little anymore, but <laughs> Joseph was sick, and I said, would you like to come to karate with Mama? He said, yes, yeah. so I put his little suit on him. He walked right in like he knew what he was doing. He sat down, and I said, did you want to take karate with the kids? He said, yes, and that was when he was two and a half, and now he's going to be 31, and he's still doing it all these years later. And um, he's pretty incredible, and again, you don't know, like lots of times parents, we want our kids to do what we did. Well, I have one son that he, he's not interested in karate, but he likes music and he likes doing things with his hands. And, you know, that's what he should do. And I remember having that conversation. I said, you know, sports and karate is my dream, but what do you want to do? And he said, I want to play the drums. So I got him a set of drums and, and that's what he should do. I mean, it's not, you, you always want our kids, like we think, if we found joy in something, they're going to find the same joy. It, it, it's not always about that. Oh, it's such a, it's, it's such a, it's a, a fishing it's a, it's expedition. It's a great statement. Yeah. That's but a great statement, and every parent should learn that. And, and they, they don't have everything. the same passion we have. No, exactly. No, and let them try everything, because I'll tell you something. Um, I even, if you've, I don't, you've never seen my sons, but they're 
not little. They're very <laughs> big boys. I let them try gymnastics. I, you know, my son said I want a, a easy bake oven because he wanted a bake. I bought it for him. Let them try everything. They'll tell you. They'll tell you what they like. They'll tell you what they want to do. But listen, you know, listen to them because it's their life too, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, short of them making bad decisions, you know, I'm not saying let them try anything every every second, but you got to be careful, obviously. But, you know, you got to, you got to like not hold on so tight that they can't be individuals. And I, I think that's totally very, agree with you. very important. I totally thing. agree with you. I, I, I really agree. Yeah. Um, so it was the younger one that found the, the and, joy in and it. And he loves music. That's what he loves doing. Yeah. And he still plays. But uh, um, we, uh, I think we were going to try to have Anthony on to, to speak, but yeah. uh, it was mom that ended up coming. Yeah, he, um, he's got so much going on right now with the studio that he wasn't able to be here. But we'll get him over here one of these days. We'll we get him we will. Maybe yeah. we'll get a show going on here. Well, I'll tell you, if you we, I know today we're going to talk a little bit about this big event that I have coming up. Um, Anthony um, is the three-time international grand champion. He's, yes, he will. He's an amazing fighter. Um, you know, people tease him all the time, say, well, you fight like your mom, but this is a good <laughs> thing. And, and um, he's, he's actually, I will say, he's probably skill-wise surpassed me. He's got great training. I'm not going to say you haven't, son, but, you know, he's, <laughs> he's really an amazing martial artist. Um, he's also going to be grading, you know, for his fourth-degree black belt. And um, he just looks sensational on our pretest the other night, so I was really, really proud of him. Now you just brought this up, so let's go right into sure. it. Coming, um, coming the um, uh, August first through the third, coming to Revere will be Can the I just yes, this? yes, will be the International Karate Championship. Um, this is um, a big international event coming to Revere. And Doreen, I'm going to let you take it from here. Sure. Um, this event actually began in 1964 by my master instructor, Edmund Parker. Um, if you look on my uniform, you'll see there's a patch that he started. And the red flame, flamed is the symbol of eternity, you know, always learning, and the three levels of learning, you know, um, you know, beginner, novice, and advanced. And then the white is the symbol of beginning, and brown is intermediate, and black is the advanced level. So it, it's a, about learning. Every year this, since he's passed away, the tournament has traveled to different countries and different hosts. And um, we've been to Portugal, we've been to Madrid, we've been to Greece, we've been to Mexico, we've been um, to the Channel Islands, uh, Dublin. Wow. And every year, the, every um, host re does the patch so we did ours you know which is this is what they'll get every oh, competitor will get that so we wanted to put you know the american flag in there boston 2013 so we kind of took some of the you know um the you know obviously we kept the flame, flame. And, um, you know, to, you to had the, your black right. And yeah. if, if you were at my karate studio, you would see on my wall, I have patches from every country that I've been to and they're all different and they're beautiful. And it's a nice, a nice thing that keeps us, con uh, you know, con uh, you know, kind of a continuity. Woody, right. Now this year, it's the 49th year. It's the 49th year of the event. So next year, we're going to go back to Long Beach where it originally started and, um, we're going to have the event there. It'll be the 50th anniversary in his honor, you know. Wow. And um, pretty incredible when you think about just one man, how he's touched the lives of so many people, not just like me. I, I you know, see people in Riviera and communities, but he was all over the world. He's got schools and people that follow his teachings, you know, from everywhere. And it's because of him that we're all here. And it's a pr it was a pretty incredible honor to have been taught by him. Um, he was a pretty famous martial artist, but that's not why I studied with him. He really, really brought, you know, education into teaching Kempo Karate. He, he had a science. There was a concepts and principles of motion and, and just second to none. And it was a pretty amazing thing for me, you know, having been an athlete, to find a teacher who was teaching, you know, actual language to be, be better, not just go like this. Uh, okay. There's actual science to it, mm -hmm. you know, and he's really pretty amazing person to meet. Um, I met him in 1982, and I had just 
oh, actually, I take that back, 83, I had just had Anthony. And I found out I was um, pregnant with Joe. So I was like not happy about going to this seminar. And I met him. And the first thing I thought to myself was, what a wonderful man he is. He's just an incredible person. And he wasn't, there was nothing pretentious about him. And he wouldn't, didn't care. He said, my name's Ed, he said to me. And I thought, he's the master martial artist. And he tells me to call him Ed. And I thought, wow, if he's like that, you know, these other people should follow suit, like you know, exactly. And and uh, so it was a pretty uh, powerful day in my life, and it changed my life because not only did I get to study an incredible art and you know system of martial arts, I now have friends that I call family all over the world. My son and I are invited to a wedding in Dublin, you know, um, because these people have become f like family to us. So yeah. it's just an amazing <coughs> thing. So. Um, but this event is three days. I know I'm kind of getting off a no, little bit. But it starts it's off very on, interesting. on uh, the Thursday, which the, this par portion of the event will be held at my karate studio. Um, this is the international back black belt grading, like which I was talking about with Anthony. Right. So we have people testing from junior black all the way up to eighth degree black belt, and they're coming from all over, um, some from Madrid, the Channel Islands, Dublin. And, you know, a lot of them, of course, are from our school because we're hosting the event. So I have, personally, I've got 13 or four, 12, 12 students that are grading for various levels of, of black belt. All right, let me stop you for sure. a minute. Who judges the grading? Okay, we're bringing in guest instructors, which will be, like, like I said, we have, you know, one coming from Dublin, one from the Channel Islands. My actual mentor now, he actually is in Tucson, Arizona. Um, we have um, a gentleman coming from Long Island, New York, all high-ranking black okay. belts that will sit on this board and evaluate um, these kids and go in with the system of, you know, you know, basing their criteria on the system that we've all studied. So they all have to, um, you know, perform different forms and techniques and, you know, they have to do some sparring and, you know, and basically, you know, show their personal growth by something creative that they've done as well. So it's a pretty, it's a pretty, it, um, you know. It's an intense. Intense experience. Okay. Yeah. And me, now on the opposite side, as their teacher, it's also an evaluation of me and my work. Sure. And what, why I do this is because I want my students to always feel like their rank is respected and credible anywhere in the world because if I, I love them, I'm going to give them all a 10th degree black belt because I love them so much. But that doesn't help them to grow. It doesn't help them to get better. And it doesn't help them to feel a sense, especially, you know, my son. I need to have him grade this way because it puts credibility to his rank. It's not, oh, your mom gave you that rank. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. yeah. Your mom got you ready. You earned it. I didn't do anything other than show you what to do. You what? did the work and you were evaluated by a board of examiners, second to none. And that way the, when you get that rank, you've actually You know in your you heart and you your know head that earned you earned it. it. You've right. earned it, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's on okay. Thursday. Go ahead. And then on Friday, because we have these great martial artists here, we're offering classes and any martial arts school can come to them. Um, they, they're going to be taught, and we have a schedule that's on our website, which I'll, I'll uh, make sure you get before I go. It's on our website that they can take classes from some of the best martial artists in the world and also some of our own local talent. Even I'm going to have Anthony, be, he's going <laughs> to be teaching, you know. Great. And um, so it'll, it's, a, it's a great, you know, really great um, day to come in. If you want to learn, it's a great place to be because, like I said, we have some very... Um, highly proficient martial artists that'll be on the floor teaching, uh, you know, classes starting at eight o'clock in the morning till five. And where is this being held? It's going to be held right at the Revere High the School, school. Fieldhouse. Okay. There's classes for children. There's classes for adults at all different levels. So that if you've never done this before, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter if you're. I wouldn't recommend taking this as your first lesson. Okay. okay. But if you wanted to see martial arts being yeah. taught, it would be great. Okay. But any karate studio could go. Okay. Um, but. Then later on in the day, we're having what we call team events where they compete in forms, they compete in fighting, and we're going to do that on the Friday evening so that Saturday we can just do all individual events. Now, that's going to be a pretty spectacular day on Saturday because we're going to start off with the Parade of Nations. And what we have 
are the flags of not only the visiting countries, but also the flags of all of our students. I mean, Revere is a melting pot. We have so many children from all over the world. It's an absolutely amazing thing. Um, so we're also representing the f countries where they were born as well. So we've got right now about 36 different countries being represented. Amazing. Pretty, pretty cool. Yeah. Um, and actually just got one more yesterday from the Cayman Islands. One of my old time black belts is going to come up and he wants to help. So we got to make sure we have a Cayman Island flag as well. Um, and that's when the kids will all compete in forms and fighting and self-defense. That's all the individual events. And that's, we have events that, are, you know, kids can be five years old all the way up to, we have a 50-plus division, so we have all kinds of events. And then the finale of the event is on uh, Saturday night at the Wonderland Ballroom, and we're having what we call our traditional brotherhood dinner, where everybody gets together and just has a good time. And just, you know, it's like, you know, the family that you see once a year. Right. So that, right. that's pretty much the rundown of that event. Um, okay, so you have the, um, the grading and then the, um, the, the classes. And then, um, now, y you gave us the dates. The we, we know it's at the high school. So people can um, the, get tickets in advance. Sure. Should they get them at the door? They can get tickets in advance. You know, they can register if they wanted to compete. They could register. They could call the karate studio. Um, we do have an online registration, but um, you know you can do that, or you can you can register at the studio. You can actually get tickets online as well. And all you would have to do is print out your receipt and show that at the door to get in. So that's that's easy enough. And the ticket is good for either or both days. You can come to watch the seminars. You can come watch the tournament. So you get, are able to you know for one fee you know come in and see that. So you have people really coming from all over the world. Yeah, um, we have um, a small team, but a team from Russia, a team from Portugal, a team from the Channel Islands, Dublin. We have about four or five teams coming from Dublin, um, a, a small team from Madrid, a team from Holland, um, a, a couple, three teams coming from Mexico, you know, and then plus locally. So we have, you know, mm -hmm. quite a number of people coming from from everywhere. Yeah. So, so I would suggest anybody uh, watching this program, which I know that everybody in Revere watches this program, to come out and support your your country, you know, and in your um, in our city. I in mean, in our city too, because this would be really interesting. Go watch this. I mean, it's really a performing it, art. It, it really, really is. is. It really is. Um, you know, I think people, you know, they they get a picture in the head of. of of martial arts that it's like Jackie Chan. And believe me, Jackie Chan is an abs I have nothing but the utmost respect for him. But you know, the movie is a movie. You right, know, and, right, right. And I love at the end when they show the outtakes because and how he misses. <laughs> because <laughs> there are a lot of misses. I right. mean you do miss. I right, mean, right. you know, this um I, I remember one of my funniest stories, one of my little students, really good, good very good little, she was in a, we call apprentice black belt when they're under um, 16. Very, very proficient, really skilled, you know. And she got, you know, jumped by three teenagers. She was 11 at the time. And she called me up crying. And I said to her, w w what are you crying about? She goes, well, I got a bump on my head and, and you know, I, I fell. And I said, did you think you weren't supposed to fall in the middle of a fight? Did you think you're not going to get? I would get a bump on the head. I would fall. And um, and she, really? Yeah. I said, you just fought off three kids that were from the high school, and you are talking to me on the phone today. Another child might have ended up, up in the hospital. And and that's one of the, like the, the myths, I think, that, you know, people think that, oh, you know, you're infallible. Or, you know, I say, all my skills are great, you know, and um, but that's no guarantee. Well, it might give me a little percentage more chance than the average person, but there's no guarantee that I'm going to protect myself either. I mean, I'll, I'll always try. I'm, that's the goal. I'm not going to say not, but I don't think people really understand that it is an art form and there's it's something an art beautiful. Form. It's not to fight. It's, it's a, that's not right. about fighting. It's no. really not. I mean, you're, you know, I, if you don't mind, I want to share a little, like, there Go. was one time I was watching a movie and it was called um, No Limits and it was about Pete Prefontaine. 
who was an Olympic runner. He went to the University of Oregon and was coached by Bill Bowerman. Bill Bowerman, by the way, is the founder of Nike. He used to, by hand, make all the sneakers for all his track runners. And so, and he put the little swoosh on it, and that's how that got set. But anyway, in the beginning of the movie, he said something which was that, you know, running won't take you through life, but by applying yourself to, to the limit, he said, it will help you to learn something about yourself that'll make sense out of the rest of your life. And when I heard that, it was many years ago, I said, that's really what martial arts is all about. It's not about can I kick and punch, but the process of really being better and uh, learning and training. It's you learn something about you that helps you to make sense out of the rest of this crazy madness that mm. we're all involved in, mm -hmm. which is called life. You know, it's not about can I kick, punch, and, you know, how many people's butt I can kick and all of that. I mean, people, you know, I, back in the day, you know, I was a pretty active tournament fighter. I was really good at it. I'm not going to say I wasn't, you know, I was very accomplished. In fact, I was on the very first professional karate team they ever had for men and women. I was one of seven women picked from the entire country. Pretty, pretty big honor, you know. Me, I was just having fun. And they said, you're good enough to be with us? Thank you. And I got to travel all over the world and, co I mean, and compete. Okay. Well, you know, that's a very, very small portion because I can't do that anymore. I love when people come up to me and say, you're still competing? I'm 57 years old. Who am I going to Who am I gonna fight? You know, I don't want to fight anybody anymore. You know? I mean, you wouldn't walk up to, you know, M you know, Muhammad Ali and say, you're still fighting. I mean, you know. Uh, exactly. You know what I mean? It's like... Um, but basically, you know, it's it's you know, it's not about that. There's far more valuable, um, important, significant lessons that happen. It, you know what? It sounds like you've learned those lessons sure. just from this interview. I can tell that you, yeah. you, you really have learned a lot of lessons, and you sound, in in this half hour, you have shared with us a lot of valuable lessons. I mean, I, I really appreciate the time that you've, you've, you've shared with us because I've learned so much and it, it's definitely given me um, the push to want to come down sure. and want to learn. I, I, and I agree with you. It's, it's, it's what you do with your life. And you said something to me when we sat down before yeah. we went on the air. Tell me what you do instead of making resolutions because I think this is one more well, really great piece that we... You know, honestly, you know, every year people make New Year resolutions, and I don't do that. I make a, three New Year goals. Try something new, go somewhere new, read something new. Because I always want to keep learning. Um, I always want to experience the world around me, and I want to see the world around me. And that's something, and that could be something as simple as, gee, I never, you know, I never visited Chelsea before. I mean, I've been there, but I'm just saying, like, it doesn't have to be that I have to get on a plane and fly somewhere. You know, what if it's if I just get on a train and I've never been to, you know, Southie, or I've never, which, you know, I, you know, I've never read this book, or mm -hmm. I never tried this, or, you know, and, and why not? I mean, I went back to school teaching school at age 48. I went back to school at age 48. So here I am, you know, in classes with kids that are younger than my kids, you know, and that was, that was an experience. But I went because I always wanted to get my master's degree, so I went. You know, um, it's never too late to try something new. It's never too late to learn something new. It's only over when you say so. And, you know, at 57 years old, I don't know what's next. I know I've done a lot of different things, but I because I want to get through this event, <laughs> but <laughs> I, I, will, I will try something new. I'll do something new. You know, I will, I will continue to do that, you know, because that's what living is. Otherwise, you just sit around and, you know, and just watch the clock tick or the days go by in the calendar. You know, like I said, for me, teaching all these years, being involved with this all these years, it, it's gone by in a blink of an eye because it never gets old because it's always new. It's always something new. Like, you know, t even the places, like I said, that I've been, I've taken teams there. I've taken a team to Portugal. I've taken a team to Dublin and many other places. Why? Because I wanted these kids to experience something the beyond just sitting in a gym, <laughs> kicking and punching. You know, they saw a different part of the world, you know. And that, that to me, is what makes our system so unique because you can't, you can go, you know, starting from 
Maui and go all the way to Greece and there's a karate, Kempo Karate School everywhere Everywhere along the way. Along the way. Well, not only does life go by in a blink of an eye, so didn't this interview go by in a blink of an eye. (laughs) Doreen, thank you for coming on and telling us about the um, the Boston uh, International Archaea. But we'll 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 put the um, the the website website on. And thank you. It was a pleasure. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. And that's it for Focus on Revere. Thank you.